Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. And now we'll have the reading of the law. We're going to begin this at Exodus. Bring your Bibles to Exodus, the 20th chapter. We're going verses 1 through 17. When you get it, my brother Cornell, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou should not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. What is wrong with that? Nothing. Everything that pertains to life. Yep. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We go on verses 13 and 14 there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is it? Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Revelation chapter 22, we got verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Hey Amen. Thank you for the reading of the Lord, Brother Cornell. Yes. I'll be your teacher today. I'm Brother Julius. To my left, and my friend who always does the lessons with me, my brother in the faith, Brother Cornell is in the house. <laughs> Praise God. The title of today's lesson, sisters and brothers, is The Fall from Christians. Again, the falls from Christians to Christianity. Mm -hmm. The fall from Christians to Christianity. There's a reason why the Lord said it in his word. He called Israel a backsliding heifer. I did, don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. <laughs> if the shoe fit, what? Yeah. Where? This lesson, sisters and brothers, was born out of, as usual, conversations and uh, your life experiences and people who ask me, what are, what are you, Brother Julius? Uh, what is your faith? You know, what is your denomination? I said, I am my, my, my heritage. I am a Hebrew Israelite Christian. The original Christians are Israelites. My faith is 
a Bible Christian. Well, they say, I'm as Christian as you, but I'm a Christian too, brothers. I said Bible Christian. There is a difference. So some of the things that we're going to read, sisters and brothers, uh, Jesus said it is necessary that offenses must come. Be offended enough to read. You just might save yourself. You just might save yourself. So I'm going to give you three definitions real quick. Three definitions. If you want to know my sources, you can see me after on any of the information that we bring to you that is not out of the Bible. You can see me later. We'll give you that information or you can get in contact with me. The first definition will be the title Christian. Christian. The definition of Christian. A person who believes in Jesus Christ follows and obeys his teaching. It didn't say Israel. It didn't say the strange. It says a person. That's everybody on the planet. A person who believes in Jesus Christ follows and obeys his teachings. The second one, Christianity. Christianity. The religion. Check this out, y'all. The religion derived from Jesus Christ. Uh Uh-uh. Based on the Bible. (laughs) I got to start that over. The religion derived from Jesus Christ based on the Bible as sacred scripture and professed by Eastern Roman Catholics and Protestant bodies. I'm going to read it one more time. The religion derived from, from Jesus Christ, which we disagree with, based on the Bible which we disagree with, as sacred scripture and professed Protestant bodies. So what I want anybody that come out of the Sunday church like I did in Arkansas, at a young age, I started to do, I had to do a background check in my my church. You got to fact check your fact check. Background check your faith. The church that you come out of, And if you want to know where they come out of, we'll show you. We got the information. And you got the information. It's called uh, Internet. You can Google it. Google it. So, and then we got Christendom. The word Christendom. Which is the, the definition of Christendom. Oh, man. The part of the world in which Christianity prevails. Any part of the world where Christianity prevails. Some places don't, it don't, and then the majority of the world has been given Christianity. But we're going to let the Bible, and we're going to put the Bible on the witness stand today, and we're going to show you that what you think you know and where you got it from wasn't from the Bible. Go, ask yourself, ask any of your people, your friends, your neighbors, what did they call this on a man? Adam's what? Say it like you mean it. Now, Now read it to me out the Bible. That's how you evangelize. And then they're going to say, well, give me your card. Show me where Adam made an apple. Cornell, we got to get going. Genesis chapter 1. Let's go. I tell you, I, I tell you, sisters and brothers, my people are, are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. That means to know. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 26 to 28. 26 to 28. When you get it, my brother, let's go, Cornell. Let's, have, let's, let's enjoy the Lord's Sabbath. Yes, and call it a delight. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. And God said, "Uh huh. let us make man in our image. Who said it? God said. Wow. In all Christendom, in Western Christian, all these Bibles, no matter what, what, brand you, what type of Bible you use, what translation, it is only one doctrine. And they all start with in the beginning God. So where do we get all these? Do- if it's only one beginning and one God, Brother Cornell, where do we get all these different Bibles from? Go ahead and read, brother. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, Uh and over the fowl of the air, Uh and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Uh Male and female created he them. Wow. So man was created by God. And this is the plan of God. Let us create man in our image after our likeness and eventually what we are made out of. But 
We're going to make him in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Did you not know that you are not just put here to, to live and die? You are put here learning how to rule and reign. You got to learn how to problem solve. Right. You got to go through ups and downs because our trials come to make us stronger because you are working on trying to become very God. A whole planet of God. Just like the whole planet is man. We just call it mankind. Yeah. We, today is graduation. Let me take these off. Today is graduation day. We have to develop the spirit mind. We lived in the flesh and blood mind. You're going to have that. You are working on developing the spirit mind. Just like Philippians 2 and 5 said. And it's just like your car. These new cars, you don't see no cassettes or you don't see no CDs. Now, you got to develop the spirit mind. That is something that you have to do. You can do it because Jesus said, let this mind be in you. That's awesome. Guess what? When he come, he going to change this vile body and, into like his glorious body. And if you are dead, he going to you going to come out there grave. God, if you are alive, he going to change you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, which is trumpet number seven. You're going to be God and you don't have to die to become God. So he going to Bluetooth you. He going to pair you. Yeah. You got a plan, Cornell. Yes, he do. Did we finish that? 28. Go ahead and read it. And God blessed them. Uh-huh. And God said unto them. Yes. Be fruitful. Uh-huh. And multiply. And do what? And replenish the earth. That mean male and female got to do that. Go ahead. And subdue it. Uh-huh. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh-huh. And over the fowl of the air. Yes. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The book said everything has been tamed by man. Because you are prepared to rule and reign. Go ahead, brother. Skip down to verse 31 and go ahead. And God saw everything that he had made. Uh -huh. And behold, it was very good. It, no, no, it was just a little good. Very good. It was very good. So the earth was not created void and in vain. It was created to be inhabited. Yeah. Because the earth is established forever. Mm -hmm. That's why no matter how high you go into the heaven, you got to come back here. No matter how deep you go into the sea, you got to come up and come back here because the earth is created to be in heaven. Why are you trying to go to Mars? Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 2, Cornel. Genesis and chapter 2. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the what? And the what? The evening and the morning. So a new day don't start in the middle of the night. It starts at sundown, mm -hmm. which makes a day. Genesis 2, we go on 1, 2, and 3. Go ahead and read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Oh, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. See what you learn as a Bible Christian compared to Christianity? Mm -hmm. Continue. We're going to show it to you. Read it again, Scott. Now read it again. That did something to me. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Yes. And all the host of them. Yes. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. On what day? On the seventh day. On what day? The seventh day. Lock that in your memory banks. Store it. It's going to be there. It's Go ahead, brother. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Uh-huh. And God blessed the seventh day. And God blessed the first day. Seven. Have y'all noticed y'all ain't seen Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nowhere? Day one through six and the seventh day he named. Mm -hmm. Bible Christian. Read. And sanctified it. Uh-huh. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which uh -huh. God created and made. So who created the, and blessed the Sabbath day? Uh, that means that no man can change it. That's right. Nobody can change it. Read the book. Believe everything that's written because man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God do man live. Hey, because your unbelief don't stop the word of God. No. Uh-uh. Anything other than what's written right here don't matter. Don't matter. It's uncivilized. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, Cornell. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life uh -huh. and man became a living soul. No, the soul was put in you. No. You want to know what a soul is? Leviticus chapter 4 and 5 on your own. If a soul sins, a soul can sin. If a soul pronounces with his lips, why? Soul got lips. If a soul hears, got to have ears to hear. If a soul touches, you got to have limbs to touch. <laughs> Oh, and the soul dies. I work at a hospital. I see stuff. 
The last thing to leave a person's body when they pass, they drew their last what? No. The Lord gave it and he what? That means that they expired. Bible Christian. Mm-hmm. Bible Christian. What verse we at, Cornel? I finished seven. Go to 15. 15 to 18. Come on. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of uh-huh. Eden to dress it and uh-huh. to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, uh-huh. but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh-huh. thou shalt not eat of it. You ain't read nowhere where you ate an apple. Where that? It ain't there. I'm going to find it, Brother Julius. I'll be here. God will a hundred years. I'll be here. I'll wait for you. One thing about truth, sisters and brothers, truth don't change. A million years from now, truth will still be true because truth they don't change. A lie, you got to add to it or take away from it. Right. Definition of a false prophet, one who adds or take away from the word of God. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Go ahead, Cornel. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, uh-huh. thou shalt surely die. Surely is an assurity. That is a matter of fact. Fast, accurate, concise truth. Fact. The day you listen to the doctrine of the devil, you shall surely die. Go ahead, Cornel. And the Lord God said, Uh It is not good that man should be alone. Uh I will make him and help meet for him. I'm going to make him a help meet for him. Mm -hmm. Anything other than this is not of God. Because you cannot reproduce. Go ahead, Cornel. Let me skip. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead and read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, uh-huh. and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Your first surgery. Go ahead and read. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, uh-huh. made he a woman, uh-huh. and brought her unto the man. Uh-huh. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone uh-huh. and flesh of my flesh. Yes. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Go ahead, brother. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So what we just read here, man was created. Man was instructed. Man was married by God. Mm-hmm. And man was blessed. Yep. Mm. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. We got one script there. We're going to show you. It ain't nothing new. The plan of God is magnificent. That's why the book says stand in awe of him and give him glory. Yes. Romans chapter 8. When you get it, Cornell, Romans chapter 8, we got verse 29. Romans 8 and 29. Come on, my brother. For whom he did foreknow, Uh he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son. Ooh, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The plan was already in effect. Yep. Go ahead and read. That he might be the firstborn uh-huh. among many brethren. That he, that means that if he's the firstborn, nobody else came before him. The person in the Baha'i faith came and told me, you believe everything in that Bible? I said, absolutely. You believe in the creation? Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. That can't be right. That can't be right. Baha'u'llah came in the... In the 1960s, I said, but the book says in the beginning, God, when was that? Well, I don't know. Well, how are you going to tell me when somebody came? Mm. Read the first four uh, on your own, Genesis chapter one. Read the first four words. In the beginning, God. That means that anything before him was not. You're going to tell me how you know how old God is and how many barks are in a dog. Really? St. John, the fourth chapter. So God predestined this mankind to be conformed to his image. And you got to worship him. You are not on your own. You are bought with a price, the shed blood of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Romans, I'm sorry, John, St. John, the fourth chapter. Let me show you what the Bible says God is. Ain't no puff of smoke. This is not our dream of genie. This is the word of God. St. John, St. John, chapter 4, we got verse 24, and then we're going to work backwards, Cornel. All right. St. John 4, tell me, according to the word of God, what is God? Read it. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why did the Lord have that, have, have that written? 
Why do you have John write that? Because everybody going to make God a fish on the back of your car with WWJD. Uh, J uh, w what is it? What would Jesus do? WWJD, he wouldn't have no fish on the back of his donkey. God is a spirit. He is not a dove. God is a spirit. He is not. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. The image of the crucifix. Thou shalt not make no graven image of me representing me of anything in heaven above, the earth beneath, or the waters under. Oh, my goodness. We have, uh, we have broken every last of the Ten Commandments. Start it again. 24, Cornel. Go ahead. God is a spirit. Yes. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must. Mm -hmm. And in truth. Because you can go to church all your life like I started out. And be wrong. Ask the average Baptist what is a Baptist. What do you call a person that works on car for a living? Okay. Career and a job. What do you call a person that works on the pipes in your house? Huh. What do you call a person that works on the wires in your wall? Career and a job. What was John doing in the Jordan River? Baptized. John the? Yeah. A Baptist is one who baptizes. That is it. When did it become a religion? <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of what? <laughs> because you worship, you know not what. 23, Cornell, 23. But the hour cometh, uh -huh. and now is. And now is. When That's the true worshipers shall worship the Father. Who are the true worshipers? Christians. Mm -hmm. Christians. Shall what? Read it again, Cornell. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You're going to do it right. That's why Jesus came and kickstarted his priests, sisters and brothers. Because we've been doing this thing because every, we are captives. Everything we got been given to us. Yeah. Your name was given to you. They done gave you somebody's history and call it black African-American history. I work at a hospital. I deal with international people. I have never heard an African say I'm an African-American. They going to tell me I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Kenya. I'm from Nairobi. I'm from the Sudan. I'm from Egypt, but never African-American. Where do we get that from? Because we failed to Christianity. Hmm. Ecclesiastes. We're going to read it again. So God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do we worship him? Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, Cornell. We got one verse there. I know we read it, but we're going to do it again. Let's do it again. Oh, my gosh. And you wonder why I read the way I read. I don't read to show people I can read. I read because I believe everything that's in this book. And the spirit of the Lord is open on this man that has brought it to us. So I stand in awe. And I never get tired of it. Had a bet on my job. Talking about I bet he can't go a day without talking about the Bible. I said, why would I not? I get tired of hearing about who killed who, who shot who, who, what happened on Housewives of L.A., what happened on Preachers of L.A. I don't care about that. <laughs> give me life. Like the song said, give me life. Yeah. Increase my faith. Yeah. Cornell. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 12. Give me verse 13, brother. Come on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's it's all that he requires of you. He asks you no more. I didn't ask you for animal sacrifices. I didn't ask you to do no big thing. Just fear me and keep my commandments. And the scripture said that the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. And it's the beginning of wisdom. You got to be confident in this thing. You got to know this thing. You can't be scared. You can't be ashamed of it. I'm worried about my family. My mother worried about me all the time. I said, mama, you did your job. Save yourself. And she, she'll tell you, I love her. I love her to pieces. But guess what? I don't love her more than God. I ain't scarred. <laughs> Revelation, the 12th chapter, Cornel. Revelation, the Cornel. You're going to come to the Sabbath day. 
Man, that's why I love the Sabbath day. My senior pastor and everybody love the Sabbath day. You try to be here, barring sickness or work, you try to be here because you are having a holy convocation. You are coming to meet and talk with your God. Somebody need prayer. When somebody is not here, when somebody is missing, that's to affect somebody else. I might be looking forward to seeing a brother or a sister. Maybe they can comfort me. Maybe I'm going, maybe breezy. Maybe I need a little bit more strength to get through the week. Maybe somebody can pray for me. How did that, where did we go wrong? War started in heaven, but it's going to end on the earth. Revelation, the 12th chapter. Let's look at it, Cornel. Let's look at it. Let's look at it, Cornel. Starting, man, I'm starting to get all warmed up up here. I'm going to be going through menopause. Oh, yeah, men go through menopause. I said menopause. 100% pure Hebrew stock here. Hmm. Revelation 12, Cornel. We're going 7 through 10. Hey, I'm, hey, hey, call the Sabbath to delight, sisters and brothers. Somebody going to learn something. And the Lord said, if one sinner turn away from their wickedness, the angels in heaven rejoice. So we love the word of God here at the Israel of God in all the camps. We love the Israel of God. We love the word of God. We love what we do. Don't get paid for it. It is a privilege, a privilege, a pleasure, and an honor to stand before you. It is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And show a mercy to thousands of them, them that love him and keep his commandments. I, I dare not. Barbara six. I, I got to be at class. I'm scared I'm going to miss something. <laughs> Revelation 12, Cornel. 12, 7 through 10. Let's go. And there was war in heaven. Yes. Michael and his angels Those fought two. against the dragon. There was war in heaven. It started in heaven. Rebellion started in heaven and they'll come down to the earth. Go ahead, Cornel. And the dragon fought in his angels. Yes. And prevailed not. Uh huh. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Go ahead, brother. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent. You know that serpent in the, uh, in the garden? He, how did he get there? We're going to read about it. I'm going to tell you a story, tell you a story. Go ahead, brother. Which deceiveth the whole world. Yeah. He was cast no, no, out. No, 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 no. You read that wrong. Which deceiveth some of the world. The whole world. You got to be careful when you say you sin free. You can't say that. Because the book has concluded and said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. First John 3 says, any man that said he had no, that's what the preacher told me. Oh, he did his footwork. I'm sin free, brother Julius. I'm saying, I said, you can't say that, preacher. The book won't bat it up. I am sin free. Show me out the Bible where I'm not sin free. So I took in the Bible, uh, uh, first John, the third chapter. Any man that says he has no sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. You picking on me. No, brother. The book says open rebuke is better than secret love. Be offended enough to look into it. He said, I hate that scripture is there. I said, then you hate God. Cordell, let's do it again. Where we at? We in the middle of nine. Go ahead and read it. He was cast out into the earth. Uh-huh. And his angels were cast out with him. Imagine one third of an innumerable about amount of angels on the earth. You can't see them. But you see him in people. That's why you say he or she has an evil spirit. Cornel, go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh -huh. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and uh -huh. the power of his Christ. Yes, because the accuser go ahead. of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You ever seen anybody always accusing somebody? Especially falsely, maybe saying your baby dad. Go ahead and read, Cornell. You want me to skip down? Go ahead. That was 12? That was Man. 10, I finished. Go ahead, skip down to verse 12 and go ahead and read. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and uh -huh. ye that dwell in them. Uh -huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth Why? and Why? of the Why? sea. Why? For the devil has come down unto you, uh -huh. having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Because he know he got, if you know you got a short time and you ain't got that much time, you're going to wreak all the carnage and havoc you can. 
Man, the Lord that gave you the power activated. Resist the devil, he will what? Flee. But you got to use the word of God on him. It works. It is the most the name Jesus is the most powerful name in the world. Did, did y'all know that the name Jesus is written 973 times in the New Testament? Because he told you his name was gonna be great. Yeah. That's better. That's higher than Yahqua, Yehuda, Yahweh Shah. Go to Europe and use that. That's where the Gentiles come from. Go to Europe and use it. I dare you, you're gonna lose the bet. Why you read that Bible? Why you serve that God? Because he is the undisputed champion of the creation and never lost a battle. Why don't you get into Egyptology, Egyptology brother Julius? Because Egypt lost. Get on the winning team. Get on the Lord's side and get out of his way and let him work. Oh my gosh. It is so easy to get lost up here. Oh my gosh. Isaiah, did we, go to, did we read that 12? Yes. Isaiah the 14th chapter. Rebellion, man, led to war in heaven, and now it's down here. All the hell is down here, which is a state of condition. Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, Revelation, uh, I'm lost. Isaiah 14, brother. Calm down, calm down. What they say, who's I? I know what I'm doing is just the thing, get to you. I tell you, get to you. Brother Bowie, I understand what he say he get in this den. My wife ain't seen me since my last, since our birthday. I be in my basement studying. Isaiah 14, we going 12 to 14, Cornell. Yeah. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, uh -huh. son of the morning? Uh -huh. How art thou cut down to the ground which uh -huh. did weaken the nations? <sighs> This was his mind. What was his mind that Cornel read it? Well, thou hast said in thine heart. The heart is a blood pump. So as a man thinketh, so as he or she. You can't do nothing without thinking about it first. Go ahead, brother. Well, thou hast said in thine heart. Uh-huh. I will ascend into heaven. That's one. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's two. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation mm -hmm. in the sides of the north. Uh-huh, go ahead. He know where he said because he got kicked out from heaven. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You know what? I will be like the most high. Being like the most high and being the most high is two different avenues. Yep. I will be like the most high. You wicked, nasty thing. That's what came on your mind. I will be like the Most High. That's five things that he wanted to be. And it's, uh-uh. Mm -mm. You might be that on earth because the book called him the prince of the power of the air. But up in heaven, uh-uh, I'm kicking you out. And that's what got him kicked out, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. That's what got him. Look at his desire again. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, Brother Cornell. All right. Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ooh, we, oh, we, oh, Lord, Lord, remember me for this. Ezekiel 28, we go and pick it up at verse 12. Ezekiel the 28 chapter and verse 12. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre uh -huh. and say unto him. Now, this is talking about a, as if it's a flesh and blood man, but this is none other than saying that the prince behind the king of Tyre. Y'all uh, didn't know that Satan was a fallen prince? Oh, yeah. Michael is a prince. Go ahead, brother. Thus saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. Thou sellest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty. The, see, we, the Lord look at beauty different than what we look at. We look at the outward. The Lord look at the, at the inward. That's why we was going to pick, looking for David. He said, uh-uh, none of these. David is the one. The Lord don't look as men look. And that's why we have to graduate. Right. We got to begin to look. We got to begin to think, God, stop thinking flesh and blood, man, because it's temporary. We got to graduate and start thinking, God, sisters and brothers, did you not know? Have you not read? Have you not understood that you are going to live forever? The day you come out of your mama's womb, you live forever. You are here forever. The grave is just a holy place for the dead. That's why the book said the dead in Christ is going to what? 
That's when the real, you're going to be on this side or that side. You're going to live forever, forever, ever. Or you're going to burn. Because he's going to wake you up. And if you are weighed in the balance and found warning, he's going to burn for you forever. Jehovah Witness told me, oh, Brother Julius, Jehovah God is not the type of God that burn people forever. I walked into the window. It was 90 degrees outside. I said, Sister Soldier, what's that up there shining? That's the sun. How long it been on fire? This has been created. God is a forever God. Yeah. You think you know everything. You think I don't know nothing. I read the book. And the Lord told you, well, Brother Cornell, how do we know these things? The Lord said the last days in Acts 2 and Joel 2, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon my young men. I, I, I want to feel say young. And my old men and, and, and my handmaids, and they shall prophesy. The best we can do is prophesy. That means to speak that which is already written. Because the Lord said, don't add to my word, don't. Take away, don't go to the left, don't go to the right. Stick with the book, and the book will bring you on in, even to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Cornell, let's go, brother. 13. Yes. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Yes. Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh -huh. The sardius, uh -huh. topaz, and the diamond. Yes. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. Yeah. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle. Yes. And gold. Yeah. The workmanship of thy tabers yes. and of thy pipes. Yes. Was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Ain't there something? The creator is trying to tell the creator, I'm going to be like you. No, I'm going to cast you out of here. I'm going to cast you out. Go ahead, Cornel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, uh -huh. and I have set thee so. Yes. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Yes. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You're, you're a cherubim angel, and you cover it. But the people have covered with a covering, but not of my covering, saith the Lord. Go ahead, Cornel. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, uh -huh. till iniquity was found in thee. That's why you got to be careful. What is the number one thing that got Satan cast out? Pride. Yeah. Pride coming before the fall. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed it to you. Yeah. He had it written in the Proverbs, and then he showed it to you by kicking the devil out, sisters and brothers. So don't get high-minded because just like the Lord gave you this word of God, you get puffed up and think you know more than anything else or anybody else, he will take you down real quick. It is a horrible thing to depart from the living God. Mm -hmm. Just believe him and keep the commandments. That's it. Yeah. Well, God know we can keep the commandments, Brother Julius. Help me out, y'all. I will put no more on you than you can bear. Oh, y'all said it. It's written. You just don't want to do it. Oh, I, I, I know I should go to, to church today, but you know what? I'm just going to watch it online. But the church is open. You ain't sick. <laughs> Ten virgin, five was wise and five was foolish. Right. It is time to fill this place up. On, don't, let, don't let the Lord catch you in your folly. Right, I ain't judging. I'm reading the book. You should have a holy convocation. Just like the feast, when people are full, we should be full every Sabbath. Sunday people, the Sunday people, I got to give them credit. They fill up their churches. We got the truth and don't want to come. Hmm. Ain't no love in the Israel of God. I said, if it ain't no love in the Israel of God, then why did your senior pastor shut everything down? So you wouldn't get sick and die. That's love. If it ain't no love in the Israel of God, then why did the Lord give us a pandemic and give us social media? So now we are the Israel of God because it's written like that in the scriptures. We can read it, the Israel of God. We are the congregation of Israel because it's written like that. <laughs> Stick to the strips. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Stick to the scripts. If you thirsty or you hungry, Hey, get you a little coffee and breakfast hour. That's your daily bread. You got 
The Lord said, let us reason together. So we got let us reason together program. The bomb of Gilead is the healing medicine. Is there no bomb of Gilead? And this is a great house. And we know that there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. There's no perfect church. Go find one. So why you here? Come on in my room. Ain't no love in the Israel of God. Oh, if y'all knew the things and the people that Israel got. Let me stop. Let's get back to it, Cornelia. Where we at? <clears throat> oh, I love this. I love it. I love it. I absolutely adore it. Where we at, Cornelia? Verse 16. Go ahead and read it, brother. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Uh-huh. And thou hast sinned. And thou, oh, you mean the devil sin? So sin started up in heaven. That means something was already activated. The law, that was the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. Told you, war started and rebellion started in heaven. It came on down here and came on down here. All the way back to verse 2, my brother. Verse 2 and read it. Here a little and there a little. Up in the book and down in the book. Go ahead and read it. Son of man. Uh-huh. Saying to the prince of Tyre, uh -huh. thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. because thine heart is lifted up. Be careful about your pride. It will get you kicked out of the kingdom of God, out of the house of God. And you thinking, I'm leaving the Israel of God uh, because I got an issue with the senior pastor or with some member. You're going to let so, somebody, uh, you feel like somebody disrespected, you're going to leave the place where you're learning how to get salvation? And the Lord said, if you faint in the day of adversity, whenever you test it, if you can't stay in your faith, then your strength is small. You judge it. I ain't judging. I'm reading the book. You got to endure. Your God did. He didn't have no problem. Didn't want to do it, but he did it. Climbed up on the cross for us all and endured it. Finish it up, Tornia. Because thine heart is lifted up uh -huh. and thou hast said, uh -huh. I am a God. You're not a God. I sit in the seat of God, uh -huh. in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, uh -huh. though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Listen, and brothers, pay attention to what we just read. This, the, what is the number one thing that the devil wants? The answer is, if thou fall down and do what? He told Jesus, trying to tempt Jesus to worship. He wants to be worshipped. Don't do it. Don't do it. Genesis, the third chapter. Let's look at the fall. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I couldn't find that. Nothing to compare to come on in my room, so I had to go to Acts and showed you where they was in the upper room. Come on in my room. Wait till I see Melvin. <laughs> my goodness. Genesis 3. Come on, Cornell. Let's go. Verse 1. We're going 1 to 6. Let's go. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, the Lord had already commanded because Adam taught his wife, and he said, the day you eat of this tree, that means you listen to the doctrine of the devil. This is metaphoric for the devil. Jesus is the tree of life. How do I know? Because he told you, it is written, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He is the tree of life. Say the devil is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not an apple. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He knows good because he came from good, but he turned. And the person going to tell me, I'm not under the law. Hmm. I keep the commandments. I say, you have always been and always will be up under the law. I'm not under the law, brother Julius. The command, the law is for the lawless. I say, brother, you error not knowing what you're saying. Show me in the Bible where I'm not under the law if I'm keeping his commandments. Easy. E Ezekiel 18 chapter. You ain't got to turn there. Ezekiel 18 chapter. When the righteous do what? Turn it from his what? From his righteousness and do that. So because I don't care, I don't, no matter how righteous you think you are, you can turn from it. That's why the Lord got that there. Just like you made up your mind to come to the Israel of God, something tragic could happen, 
or you could hear uh, meet somebody and something could happen and you could, like the girl told me, uh, I don't want to do this. Don't talk to me about God. I lost too many people to the pandemic. What kind of God does this to his creation? I said, what kind of people break his laws, statutes, and commandments in spite of being warned? Last time I read my Bible, the Lord said, I have mercy on whom I will. I kill whom I will. Isaiah 57 and 2 will tell you the righteous are taken away and merciful men. The righteous perish and merciful men are taken away to prevent them from the evil to come. Read the next verse to tell you they're going to wake and they're going to be in their bed. They're going to wake from out of their sleep, Cornell. The Lord got them. Fear God and keep his commandments. I don't hear nothing about God. It's okay. He's still coming and you still going to the lake of five. You don't repent from that foolish statement. Paul warned us about the emotions of the flesh. My motto is do not be led by your emotions. If you're led by more your emotions, you are going to say something or do something that you can't take back. Every idle word is going to be accounted for. Oh, by the way, those of you on social media, everything you type is going to be accounted for because you can tear people down with your fingers. Cornell, let's go. Two. Yeah. And the woman said unto the serpent, Yes. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yes. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God he, have said, Yes. Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, uh -huh. lest ye die. Now she understood that. Adam understood that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See? When somebody come to me and tell me, Brother Julius, if you chant and hum, the devil don't know what you're saying. I say, sister, the devil got all your passwords. He got your email. He got your phone number, your address. Don't bring that to me. You're not dealing with a novice. I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm showing you what a Bible Christian understands. Because you don't went to the book. You have stood in the council of the Almighty. Go ahead, Cornell. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah. For God doth know uh -huh. that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. For God do know. Mm -hmm. The devil knew the plan of God. Pay attention to what you read. For God do know. He knew the plan of God. He did not, for whatever reason, his rebellion, he wanted to be like God. Uh-uh. You mean to tell me he going to make these beings out of dirt? And I got to worship them? I got to fall down and serve this man, this flesh and blood? Uh-uh. Rebellion. For God do know, go ahead and read. That in the day ye eat thereof, uh -huh. then your eyes shall be open. Uh-huh, because knowledge you makes your eyes open. Not an apple. Go ahead. And ye shall be as God, uh -huh. knowing good and evil. See what he said? The same thing that he wanted to be. You shall be as God's. He didn't say you're going to be God. You shall be as God's. Boy, I tell you, boy, Satan the devil is a master marketer. He knows how to make sin look, feel, and taste good. But the wages of it is what? Yeah. There you go. Let's go, Cardell. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eye, uh -huh. and the tree to be desired to make one wise, uh -huh. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, uh -huh. and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did What eat. did the Lord tell Ezekiel to eat? Eat the roll, eat the book, eat the words. Stop thinking carnal mind and graduate to the spirit, graduate to the spirit mind. You eat with your mouth, but that's the physical eat. The spiritual eat is with your eyes and your ears. Y'all got that? Y'all still with me? Yeah. Come on, Cornell. Did we finish that? Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. He got him. The day that you have a conversation with Satan the devil, you shall surely die. You cannot entertain this guy in no way, shape, or form because he will kill you. Did you not know that the word Satan means murderer, the son of destruction, Abaddon, Apollyon? Mm -hmm. Nothing good about him. He wants to kill, steal, destroy because he, he's a professional there. In the days of Job, the Lord asked him, where are you coming from? What do you say, Cornell? From walking to and from fro. From doing what? Walking to and fro in the earth. The devil is a professional walker. He's checking you out. 
He's a professional walker. All that a man have will he give to save his life. How do he know that? Because he's watching. He watches everything. Catch you at your weakest point. Let me check. Let, let me check on Brother Julius. Let, let, me check, let me see if he's serving God. Let me check him. Let me check him. Like the sister out of town told me, Brother Julius, Brother Bowie teaches the same thing for him. He teaches the same thing. I got all this lesson. I, I know all this lesson. He need to do something else. He need to teach something else. I say, sister, sister, you mean Genesis, the revelation is no longer good enough for you? Satan is on his way, sister. Somebody teaching from Genesis to the Revelation, and yet the Bible, this whole Bible, the most popular book in the world, the mind of God. 58 years old I am, and I've never heard God's voice in my life. When I want to know what's on his mind, I read his book. And you're going to tell me you're tired of listening to Brother Bowie. But I ask you a question, and you can't quote none of it. Mm. Satan, Satan, subtle. He, he, you, you, oh my goodness. Romans, the fifth chapter, y'all. We got to get out of here. I got to get you out of here before the next feast. <laughs> but when you love it, it's so much you have to cut this lesson and add to it and take it away because the word of God is so vast. You can do a lesson on every verse if not every word. Romans chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 12 and skip. Romans 5 and 12, let's, get, let's do this, Cornelia, let's go. Wherefore, uh -huh. as by one man sin entered into the world, uh -huh. and death by sin, uh -huh. and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Because we listen to the devil. God can't lie. He told you the day that you listen to the devil, you shall surely die. All the cemeteries are full of what? Because God can't lie. When are we going to believe him? Well, I'm going to talk to my deceased relative. For what? They can't hear you? I'm going to pour out some liquor. They can't taste it. Drink it. Don't waste money. Don't waste time. I'm going to have a, re a balloon release party. That is emotion. That is an act of vanity. They can't see it. It is for self-comfort, but it don't take away truth. I ain't judging nobody. I ain't knocking nobody. We've all done some things that we didn't know that we was doing. Come on, Cornell. 14. Yes. Nevertheless, yes. death reigned from Adam to Moses, uh -huh. even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So Adam didn't believe God, but sin in the ways, the de the ways of sin is death. Sin, ain't no big sin, ain't no little sin. The wages of all of it is death. Mm -hmm. Misery loves what? Satan is miserable. He's already judged. He's waiting on the judgment. How do I know? The scripture said, have you come to torment us before the time, them angels? Jesus, uh, they, that's what they told him. We know who you are, thou Jesus, the son of God. Have you come to torment us before the time? They already judged. They just waiting on the judgment. Misery loves what? Don't be company. I don't want to end up in a lake of fire and I run into Satan and, and, and I be uh, burning with worms eating on me. Ah! 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 What? Uh, what am I doing here? The devil going to say, ah, are you listening to me? And it don't stop. Burn it forever. When can't call time out. You can't tap out. You can't cry, uncle, uncle, uncle. And you can't sub, substitute. Ain't no substitute. Cordell, where we at? In the 14th. Let's go, brother. Who is a figure of him that was to come. Uh-huh. But now, as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which so, is by one man, yes. Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. That's why you got to kiss the son. Accept him. 
Understand what he did for us, sisters and brothers, because Adam's disobedience, sisters and brothers, Adam's disobedience uh, led to death, even the second death. Oh, my God. Disobedience will always bring a fall, sisters and brothers. That's why the book, that's why your parents say hard head make a what? When are we going to believe it? Nobody gets by and there's no easy way out. There's no easy walk. That's why Jesus said, he that endureth until the end, until the end, until the end, until the end, the same shall be what? Save. What you saved from now? See, Christianity teaches that you saved already. Just believe on Christ and accept what he did and say the sinner's prayer and you are saved, but then you can still bleed. You still feel pain. You still can die. Oh, my goodness. 15. Did we read that? Yeah, we read. Let's go to Exodus 19 chapter. You get caught up. It's easy to get caught up. Adam's disobedience led to the fall, sisters and brothers. See, Satan the devil needs something to work through. You can't see him, but you see him in people. Because he needs something to work through. He's already condemned, and now he wants you to be condemned with it. He wants company in the lake of fire. That's why the Bible keeps telling us that hell has enlarged itself. Why? Because it's all more, always more room for the next sinner. It's just like something that uh, elastic. It expands, and it expands. Don't go there. Don't go there. Exodus 19, chapter. We're going 3 to 9. Exodus 19, 3 to 9. Come on, let's go, Cornel. And Moses went up unto God, uh -huh. and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, uh -huh. Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, uh -huh. and tell the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, uh -huh. and how I bare you on eagles' wings, uh -huh. and brought you unto myself. Yes. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, uh -huh. and keep my covenant, uh -huh. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Why? For all the earth is mine. This is the Lord talking to Moses. There's no such thing as a Mosaic law. That is Christianity. Everything that Moses got, the Lord said, uh, uh, told, told Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and tell them, thus said the Lord. Moses was the intercessor. And Moses is still accusing us to this day. How? Through his writing. You wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't know nothing about how the creation formed and Moses didn't write about it. You wouldn't know nothing about Enoch unless Moses wrote about it. You wouldn't know nothing about the circumcision unless Moses wrote about it. So he's still accusing us today. Jesus said, think not that I will accuse you in St. John, the fifth chapter. There's one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. Because Moses wrote about me. So Moses is accusing us. The queen of Sheba is going to rise up in the German and accuse us. Because we know the truth. We got the book. It's complete. And we still won't believe it. Cornell. Mm -hmm. Six. Yes. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. A kingdom. Can you imagine a kingdom of priests? Priests teach people. Instruct people in righteousness. A kingdom of priests. A nation of priests? Go ahead, Cornell. And an holy nation. Yes. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Ooh, we. Go ahead and read. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people uh -huh. and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. See, there no such thing as a, Mo as a Mosaic law. Everything Moses got, the Lord commanded him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, Cornell. And all the people answered together and said, Yes. All that the Lord have spoken, we will do. Lip service. Oh, man, we, we love the word of God. It sounds so good, but when it comes time to do it, uh-uh. Do we have the fortitude to do that? All that the Lord has said, we will do. And the Lord heard everything. He, he hears and he, he knows these things, sisters and brothers. What verse, Cornell? In the eight. Man. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And Moses returned the words of the people. All their Lord, they have said all. And that's when you entered into a covenant with the Lord, did the blood thing, and set up the tabernacle and the, the blood on the books. All that, because it's a blood covenant. Romans chapter, 
Romans. Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry, Hosea, the thirteenth chapter. You don't My glasses finish back that. on. You don't want to finish that. Did we finish it? No. Go ahead and read it. We have verse nine. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud yes. that the people may hear when I speak with Watch thee. Watch this. Watch this, Cornel. And believe thee forever. Wow. Read and that again. And the Sister Lord brothers, said unto listen. Moses. Listen. Listen to Bible language. Listen to it. Read it again, Cornel. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee. And believe thee forever. And we still talking about Moses today. That's a long way. That's a long way from the book of Exodus. Speak. I'm going to speak to you, Moses, and you're going to teach the people and they're going to believe you forever. That they may. We still talk about Moses today. We spit on the name of Jesus which came from heaven. The name came from heaven, but we accept the name Moses, which is Egyptian. We got it backwards. That they may believe thee forever. Did we finish that, Cornelius? And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Let's look at how we worship, how Christians worship God. Exodus 20, let's do it again. 1 through 17. And God spake all these words, saying, Yes. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Anything that you love more than God can become a God to you. Read, Cornel. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, uh -huh. or that is in the earth beneath, uh -huh. or that is in the water under the earth. If you make an image and attribute it to God, you are going to worship it. You are going to worship it. Brother Julius, your birthday is July the 28th. Well, uh, I don't care. <laughs> now you're doing the star, uh, you're, you're stargazing. Now you're stargazing. No graven image of anything in heaven above. You're stargate. Leo, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Virgo. Okay, and? Stargazing. Starlight, starlight. First star, I see the night. Now you worship in the host of heaven. Aaron built a golden calf. That's a land-based creature. He told you to do the around the fourth chapter, lest you look up to heaven and begin to worship the sun, stars, and moons, which are given for days, seasons, years, and time, not to be worshipped. And now you got Sunday Christianity. We violated. That's why all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus. Come on, Cornell. Come on, Cornell. Five. Yeah. Thou should not bow down thyself to them, nor uh, serve them. Thou should not bow down. You do it every December 25th when you bow down a tree. You got a tree on top of your car. You done went and cut it. Now you done graduated to artificial trees. Then you deck it with silver and with gold, just like Ezekiel said you're going to do. Now you go hold hands and say, oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> and after it died and all the pin needles are on the floor, now you got to clean up out there and burn it. You worship, you know not what. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him as spirit in the truth. I'm not knocking nobody. I, I'm guilty. I was Nine years old when I found out there was no Santa Claus. There is a such person, there was a such person as Nicholas the First, Santa Claus, patron saint to the children. So, and you know, don't know fat man fly in a sleigh. You know reindeer don't fly and bust your chin me open with toys. <laughs> now you got to pay for roof repairs. <laughs> Unreal. I'm, I'm telling you, that's why Brother Bowie said, I sell you a bridge. We go for that. <laughs> Rudolph with your nose so bright. Uh, what? <laughs> we got our kids coloring Easter eggs 
and you know rabbits don't, you know rabbits don't live, and you went to the store and got them eggs and boiled them. <laughs> you know rabbits don't, Christianity. Chris, Chris, uh, Cornell back. Back to the next episode. Five. Yeah, go ahead, brother. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh-huh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and who? keep my commandments. Who, who gets the mercy? Those, Those that, that love him and do what? And keep his commandments. And who do he visit? Those that hate him. Go ahead, Cornell. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh -huh. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. If you don't keep my law, statutes, and commandments and live by them, you'll take his name in vain. Go ahead, Cornel. Remember the Sabbath oh, day. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What did we read? What day was the Sabbath day? Day number what? Seven. Seven. And it's the only one out of the Ten Commandments that start with remember. Maybe he knew that man was going to forget. Maybe you need a reminder. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It is so important. Look how much emphasis he put on this day where you go to meet with your God, learn about your God, learn how to come out of sin, and learn how to save yourself. Read, Cornel. Eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. I gave you six days to do whatever you want to do in terms of the labor. You mean tell me you can't leave your old lady or your old man alone for one day? You cannot light the cigarette for one day? You can't discipline yourself to learn how to become God? You judge it. No, I'm reading book. I'm reading book. Go ahead, Cornell. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Anything other than that is a lie. Yeah, I said it's a lie. Go ahead. In it thou should not do any uh -huh. work. Uh -huh. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, uh -huh. thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, yes. nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Go ahead, brother. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the uh -huh. sea, and all that in them is, uh -huh. and rested the seventh day. Uh -huh. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. What day did he bless? Seven days. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart. Go ahead, brother. Honor thy father and now, thy mother. Now, the Lord showed you how to honor him. You keep his commandments. The Lord is a social God. You know, social media, social, how people live with people. You had social studies in school, right? Social is how people live with people. The Ten Commandments are two commandments. Love of God and love of man. You just heard love of God. Now let's look at love of man. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. That Honor thy, days, thy father with, a, with an addendum on it. What's the addendum, Cornel? That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Maybe somebody dishonored their mother and the Lord took them out. Maybe the Lord had to collect. Go ahead and read, brother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt do no murder. There's a time to kill, and there's a time not to kill. When you say thou shalt not kill, you don't do no premeditated murder. You ain't got to get mad at somebody and key up their car. You ain't got to get mad and go and uh, uh, get a, a, a high-powered rifle or gun and shoot on somebody. God is a killer. Turn it over to him. Leave it to the professional. Right. I didn't say you could. The Lord didn't say you could defend yourself. We ain't talking that. We talking about just somebody that's want to upright, wicked, and kill somebody. Where we will change.